All right, Baisa, back by popular demand. We're going to be uh, continuing our Hilchos Pesach uh, Ben Azman and Drashas. And it's a very long series, super, super long. Not sure how long, but it's going to go through Pesach, the entire Yom Tov, uh, until Shavuos. So we wanted to, so where do we leave off? I believe we left off uh, right when you walk into in, into the house uh, after Shul. And you, uh, you the whole Mishpach is there. I think that's where we left off. So let's continue. Let's 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 go to the bottom of the page. All right, is everyone with me? Okay, perfect, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so what happens next? So now we have the seder. So the seder is obviously not going to start on time, and there's obviously going to be a lot of stress involved to getting it started. It's not very. It's not really for everybody to be worrying about. It's not for everybody. Not everyone's supposed to be part of the whole matziv. All right, there's there's different there's different uh, positions in the family now. So there's one ringleader who's in charge of. All the kids, she's like the coolest uh, tante or the cousin uh, who knows tons and tons of sticky games from uh, Camp Romamu or Sternbergs, but not that game. There's one game we don't play with the little kids, all right? And they take them down to the basement and they can they can all try to be distracted until the Seder starts. And then there's the kitchen staff. So the kitchen staff is always going to be <coughs> mommy, bubby, um, all the tantes. And a couple of the mommy's helpers are gonna be on. They're gonna be there on the stools. They they they're they're really uh, the most degraded of all. And they they're sitting there like cleaning out the incinerator, but their mom is contributing. And uh, you have to make sure to give them a lot of space and to be very helpful to them and, and bring all the garbage cans uh, to everyone's stools so that they can dump all over you. Uh, and uh, the like leave. This is all sort of like the the Ezra's Nashim. And then as far as the Bachrim go, so this is the best time of year to be really holding and learning. I'm telling you, if you could pick any Yom Tov where you can go back on the derech and flip out, Pesach is the best Yom Tov. Because you don't have to do anything. You can, when it's coming time to Pesach clean, you can run to Shul, you can have an early minion, an early Chavrisa shop. Uh, during the Seder, when it gets to Magid, you can go and you can go to the living room and just say that you really, you need a, you need a Chazer over your little notes, your squiggly book. And you can go take a nap or you can even eat some chametz. no one's even watching you. So if you're gonna pick a time to flip back on, Pesach is very convenient. All right, there's a lot of other a lot of other gimmicks to it. You you usually get to not have to help clear the table because you're learning. You bring your gemara to the table, and uh, during the whole day, you can you don't have to babysit once. You can go to every minion and shul. You could also say that you're like leaning for 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 shul, whatever it is. You're, you, there's a lot of opportunities to not have to be needed and to be. Which is a huge thing we discussed, which is the biggest Indian in Yiddishkeit. So you could do that, and then this should keep everyone busy. And this is only part four of the whole, the whole, the whole seder. So we have a lot more to go over. But this is just a, a little kvittel for us to stick into our brains for a second. All right, guys.